You have to go six feet. Yeah, that way. Forget about uh, shaking of hands, hugging and all that because of COVID-19. According to global statistics, we have 6.1 million positive cases of coronavirus. And of course, number of deaths, 371,186. For recovered uh, uh, cases, uh, 2.7 million and counting. Uh, right now, the world is talking about reopening the economy, but the health aspects of it, <coughs> most of them are saying don't do it right now. In the U.S., we have 1.8 million reported cases. For Brazil, close to half a million. Russia, close to half a million. And the number just keep on going higher and higher. Coming down to Nigeria, according to samples tested, 60,825. Yeah, this is by NCDC. Confirmed cases, 9,855. Active cases, 6,726. Discharge cases, 2,856. And of course, casualties, talking about the number of death, 273. And we are talking about reopening the economy. Donald Trump talked about, look, we have to learn how to live with this virus because it is not going anywhere soon. The big question now is, is it possible? With me here in the studio is a medical <coughs> practitioner, and of course a legal practitioner. I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Sir Robinson Imade, a legal practitioner. Uh, welcome you to this morning on ITV, sir. Appreciate your coming. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. All right. And of course, I have Dr. Dominic Ativi, a medical practitioner. Doc, welcome to TMI. Thank you very much. I'm nice to have you. Man. All right. I'd like to start off from the medical angle. <coughs> from what we have here, globally, 6.1 million and counting. Let's forget about it. Let's come to Nigeria. We have uh, 9,855. And Paul is saying, look, enough is enough. Let's go back to our normal activities. We can live with this virus. It's not going anywhere soon. Let's learn to live with it. Is it possible? Sure. Um, by every means, uh, that's the way forward. That's what to do. That's just the headway. We can't continue to, um, uh, we can't continue to mourn. Um, and we can't continue to... Well, the word is uh, you don't get to cry beyond the belief, you know? Mm. So uh, as it is, it's a global pandemic. We've accepted our fate. Uh, we have seen that some persons will die somehow, and then some will survive. And that is what the, the whole idea of living is, survival of the fittest. Sadly, for those that will die, for the uh, few persons that will lose their loved ones, it's not going to be easy. But the economy, the country, the world has to keep moving. We keep living and we can live with coronavirus. Okay, let's take uh, statistics back to uh, what's happening in, uh, in, the, in other climes like uh, the UK and the US. For the, for the UK, an average of um, 2,000 daily new cases is seen every day in the UK. And then um, uh, an average estimate too, epidemiologists would, would say, of about two to three hundred, two to three hundred persons die on that. But for them now, they've actually got into the peak. You know, I always say that that it usually follows a Gaussian curve. They've got mm -hmm. into the peak of the curve, and then now they are beginning to see some form of deceleration. It's now dropping down. Now the uh, statisticians and the epidemiologists have seen that over time this is unlikely to go higher than this two thousand in the UK at the sea on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. now they have to resume. But what are the measures that have been put in place for reopening? You've said earlier that um, uh, President Donald Trump have actually asked citizens in the United States to come back, reopen everywhere, starting from churches, then open the economy, and then get things going. We have to come down home here to Nigeria and do the same. As it is, we have to live with the virus. And what are the things we might want to do? First of all, we might want to put stringent measures. And then uh, we're going to, we're supposed to um, have this kind of phasal reopening. Uh, in Edo State here, I must say uh, kudos to the governor on a particular angle I see he's following right now. Um, he's actually, his body language, you know, his body language is not as restrictive as it used to be before. So it, means, it so means that um, some of the economy area, that is the markets and some other places, they are beginning to reopen. 
gradually, even though without him pronouncing that they should come back. If you look at it prior to this time, like two, three weeks ago, it's been a panic. No, no money, everywhere is dry, people are staying at home and all that. But right now, the shoe, a cobbler can actually go to work. Somebody right. selling cements can actually sell right. stylishly and technically. And then, of course, getting so stylishly and technically, yes, and not course. direct. It's not direct, because if you see the way they open their shops, they all right. it in a systematic way. That's okay. the way forward, actually. Okay. Maybe all right, other all right Doc. Uh, okay. I will come back to you now. You just hold on. Now, from what he said as a medical practitioner, is uh, cool we can live with the virus. Now, talking about the methodology, well, I say the ways of living with the virus. Uh, as a legal practitioner, uh, and of course, with a man of experience, you've seen so many things, but working for you also, you know the impact of this virus. They are talking about living with the virus. As a typical Nigerian, do you see us being able to adopt the kind of lifestyle that would enable us to live with this virus? Well, uh, it does not take so much to live with the virus. I think it is overdue. The doctor here has said that the people of those states have uh, devised a means of living with the lockdown. That it used to be very absolute, very difficult. But today it's loosening out as people are technically and indirectly going about their businesses. That's living with the lockdown. I also think in the same vein that we can live with the virus. Because uh, he is a doctor, he will tell us, if I'm wrong, I do not think this is the most deadly disease we have in Nigeria today. I think that as we speak, malaria is killing more people than the COVID-19. I also think that uh, the HIV and AIDS is still there. And that AIDS is killing people gradually. We are living with it. We can also live with the COVID-19 because in the first instance, we cannot adopt this defeatist attitude of locking down our economy, locking down our social life and all, because there's a virus that we, as lay people, cannot see, which effect, to me, is minimal. If the total number of uh, cases confirmed in Nigeria today is about 9,000, you said? Mm. 9,000. Yeah. Out of a population 9, of 9,854. Almost 10,000. Out of a population of 200 million, over 200 million. To me, it's negligible. And the fact that we have not taken enough measures to curtail this thing in Nigeria, as we are technically and surreptitiously going about our businesses, and the figure is still as low as it is, shows that it is not as um, deadly, it is not as um, terrible as the government wants us to see it. In the first instance, living with the virus will mean that uh, we adhere strictly to the necessities. They give us guidelines as to how to avoid it, keep to social distance where possible as we are keeping here today, wash your hands regularly, reduce the number of patients you embrace because I'm not sure they say we should not embrace our wives. <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, that's on a light hand note. Yeah, on the light hand note. And um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, keep basic hygiene principles. Mm. If we do that, if we make jingles out of that, and government mm. begins to drum that into our ears, and uh, we also ensure that we 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 we, we curtail our social excesses, I'm sure we can positively live with the virus. Mm. Otherwise, I think that. Uh, not living with the virus is do, giving us more, doing us more harm than good. People talk about others, more, pe more people dying of hunger and starvation than of coronavirus. What the uh, advanced claims have done for the, their people cannot be compared with the, the, the palliatives that we are giving in Nigeria. I don't know when last our governments, states and federal, uh, gave double ration, double, double portion of palliative uh, uh, consignments yeah. to Nigerians. Okay. You do it once and for all. A, a package that cannot last for three, four days for a family of four, and you say you are helping people, and billions are going into it. People are smiling to the banks on account of coronavirus, and the poor people are dying of hunger, dying of the other effects of coronavirus. The reasonable thing to do just now 
is to learn to live with it. Okay. And living with it does not take so much. Okay. Keep basic hygiene principles. All right. Now, from what you said, living with it does not take so much. But some of the opinion that living with these barrels is very expensive, because you talked about dieting can be part of it according to some medical practitioner as you watch what you eat you take in some things and of course uh, 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 getting your face mask that we are not used to it naturally and we are uh, uh, these kind of communal uh, uh, citizens in Nigeria so how can we really fit in okay I'm um, just talking about the living with uh, the virus and how we can fit in I think um, one of the very important measures that should be done now is uh, uh, while we anticipate reopening pretty soon, maybe from next month, which is in a few hours' time, mm. you know, while we anticipate that reopening, these are the things that uh, the government of the day should put into consideration while we reopen. One will be um, there should still be a lockdown for certain age grade individuals, especially extremes of age, in particular. We will be interested here up on the very elderly. I want to tag a 70 year as a lockdown age or 75, depending on review by uh, the federal or the state government. So, okay. those are the people that are high there, they are more at risk of coming down with the coronavirus that can endanger their lives and possibly lead to demise. Next will be uh, people that have comorbidities. Now, you are already elderly. And then you have any of diabetes, you have a retroviral disease, you have um, every other, you have uh, maybe asthma, asthma and some other uh, uh, diseases that we, type, we tag as uh, uh, comorbidities. If you have those, you are supposed to also have that form of total lockdown, especially if you are old. Now for the uh, uh, public servant and civil servant, there should be reopening of their activities. They should call, return back to work while at work we we'll maintain social distancing like uh, the like the legal officer here has said you should maintain the pretty hygiene the very simple basic hygiene maintain that then social gathering like he also said again i'm still emphasizing we will reduce it to a negligible or a near absent level at 7 p.m or 8 p.m you will tell all those that are selling because they are also part of the economy we want to develop we we'll say by 8 p.m. every uh, angle, every joint should be closed, and that should be enforced. At least we're giving them some time to get their sales up to 8 p.m. and then we stop that. While at that, you are monitoring the level of compliance in them so that the economy resumes. Then next will be um, schools, for schools in particular. We have to objectively look at what this other, this reopening system. When we've watched it for like one, between uh, four to six weeks, we can now start resuming reopening schools. Yeah. Reopening of schools, for me, I will take it to be uh, sometimes in August, so we can have an August to remember. If we're able to open school in August, prior to that time, we would have seen what are the, what, are, what is the rates these diseases are climbing. And most importantly, the government must put in a lot of money, a lot of incentives to the health sector where doctors, nurses, and other health care uh, workers will be able to take care of their patients. Because, like I said, the fact that uh, we are going to reopen, there's likely going to be a height, an increase in the, in the rate of uh, infection. So we are able to manage these patients symptomatically. As oh, well. oh, all right, because some may be like, is this doctor speaking as a Nigerian or is speaking for the government? Talked about the, the curfew. Nigeria and staying at home once it's eight o'clock, you go back to your house. Is it feasible? Okay, no. Oh, hold on, I, I'm trying to question as uh, 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 Barrister Robinson Imade. Now, I, you, 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 you're giving some rules, yes. If, 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 if you talk about uh, a standard way of following up this trend, yes, it's feasible, but Nigerians with a peculiarity, you tend to stay at home no, I do from mean eight o'clock. That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. Eight o'clock. That's not what I meant. I, yes. I was, I was, I'm, I'm specific about mm. areas, joints, where you go and have these social gatherings, you know. Because they're also part of the economy, they need to be reopened. But if up till 8 p.m. Mm. you're able to close that particular aspect, mm. I'm not saying there should be a lockdown. Okay. No, that, I, that, because that's the joints problem. boom from 8 and above. Sadly. Anyway, I, I'll come up to that. I'll take it up because talk about well, living with this virus uh, right now. Yeah. yeah. I agree with 
the doctor to a very short extent. In the first instance, let's start with the elderly. Why do we want to discriminate against them? If we lock them at home and every other person is out doing the, their respective businesses, what are we going to put in place for them? What will government do for them? Okay. We don't have many old people's homes in Nigeria. We look after our, our old ones. Yeah. And uh, many of those 70 and above still look after themselves and their own children and grandchildren. Uh, I think that would be discriminatory if mm -hmm. we are opening the economy. We open it for everybody. And to think of uh, allowing civil servants go back to work and the children at home, I don't know how possible that is because uh, who looks after the children at home? I would have thought that even before the civil servants go to work, we open up the schools, mm, the creches, so that when they are going to work, they leave their kids with the care providers, the, 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 the respective creches and schools. Am I going to be comfortable in the office when my two, three-year-old children are at home? At the care of who? How many of us, how many people can afford house apps? How many house apps do we trust in Nigeria? You know, it's going to be difficult, but it's a, a, a risk that is worth taking that will open up the economy. The school must be given top priority. Our children are at home for most now. They are not learning, and we are thinking of, we may be, if we take the doctor's advice, thinking of August to remember. I would think that we think of June to remember. So that these children go back to school, the, their parents monitor them for a week or two, and they, they, then they resume their own uh, daily activities. Otherwise, um, nobody will work with full concentration, leaving the children at home with nobody to look after them, nobody in quotes. Mm -hmm. Also, I think that um, talking about net life, we must be able to make sacrifices, we'll see. In the first instance, if we say, let's the joints, joints in quotes now, the, the, the relaxation sports, let them close at eight. They will be left outside, nothing. And I don't particularly believe in nightlife. But it's maybe for a living via nightlife. Yes, mm. so if we open the economy, let the churches be reopened. Let the schools be reopened. Let even the, the joints be reopened, but let us maintain social distance. You talked about a, a face mask. I don't know. I use when it is necessary that I use. I see people wearing face masks, driving their car and their air conditioned car alone. I don't do that. I don't see the necessity for that. Is it my car that's going to affect me or I affect my car? But if, it, if, if the face mask is working, then why are we talking about social distancing? I think that what is most important is to avoid such close contacts. And that can happen in the churches, it can happen in the schools, it can happen even in joints. Because if we close the economy, I think that the, the, the beer business, I don't take plenty of it, boosts more than most businesses in the country, especially in the southern part of the country. And if that one is closed, then the economy has not really reopened. Because in the first instance, like you said, it is from 8 o'clock that those who believe in going to relax outside their homes do that. Mm. I don't even put on my headlamp any day because at 6 o'clock in the house. If sanity happens and you hear one of his name, they had an accident at 7. Don't be afraid, it's not me. Mm. But I won't be out at that time. But it's not to say that any aspect of the economy should be so guarded, should be so... Uh, 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 lockdown in quote or restricted okay. because we're opening the economy let us maintain the safety valves mm -hmm. what the doctor who medical practitioner like himself mm -hmm. ask us to do let us do it mm -hmm. and i believe very strongly mm -hmm. in keeping social distance okay all right now yes um i want to react to some of the things um, mm -hmm. he has said mm -hmm. um well coronavirus is a pandemic that requires everybody to have some form mm -hmm. of sacrifices and for us to be able to move forward, we need to make a lot of sacrifices. First of all, ultimately, I will start from the last point of reopening, that is uh, where he's talking about night lives and what have you. For us to be actually able to effectively manage coronavirus, we need to 
as much as possible. Sacrifice that night life. But that's Late. killing some no, 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 killing no, no, some no, persons. I, I, I was quick to say because that's what they have their living. That's what they get the living. I mean, yes, I was quick to say. I was quick to say this that you could reopen. Now the government doesn't necessarily have to take my words. Uh, hook, line, and sinker. You know, mm. they may say they want to reopen the nightlife till 10 p.m. Okay? okay, so That'd if you are saying till 10 p.m., then you are able fair. to manage everything everybody does. So anything beyond 10 p.m., you need to sacrifice that. I mean, that's one. Yeah, Two, because best. there's going to be a boomeranging effect back to our children, ultimately, which I'm trying to come up to speak on now. Mm. Now, for the kids going back to school, I still think an August to remember is actually a better time. But he said a June to remember. Yeah, he was saying a June to remember. And I'll, yeah. I'll, like to, I'll try, like to say why it shouldn't be a June to remember, but an mm. August to remember. Mm. Now, if we're able to open this economy systematically yeah. that we are about doing and in phases, you, we'll be able to see the trend. We'll be able to know, can we risk this set of individuals? For some of us, we have some form of immunity with adults mm. compared to the kids. Mm. And of course, you will die slowly if your children are infected. What are you living the life for? Three, four of your kids already down with coronavirus, maybe they also have some other health challenges and all that, and they're yet you are the man or the woman at home and you're happy, you can't be happy, of course. So those children are very special categories. Again, the other category I said about elderly, very elderly, that is those above 70, 75 years mm -hmm. and all that. They are the ones that coronavirus technically is targeting to affect. Everything in their immune system has already gone down. It's not as strong as it used to be for young men and women. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't want to risk them by any means okay now talking about other spheres of the economy that have stylishly and technically reopened at least from this side of the divide now we're beginning to see that some form of activities is still going on now very important i must before i forget that face marks you know there's a challenge within face marks and that is the challenge is what has been leading to uh, this uh, controversy of increase in our uh, our case series that we have now these marks that have been produced, how are they produced? The marks are being sold, especially the clothes type of marks. Yeah. You well, see streets, people that yeah. are on the streets, some persons are actually infected, like we said. This virus is actually an asymptomatic thing. I must not be sneezing and coughing or walking on the road before you know, ah, Dr. Ativia should be a suspected individual mm. for coronavirus. Now, you see on the road while you drive past people, changing different face masks and then they are wearing you know i mean just to match i'm wearing the light blue and i get the light blue <laughs> this and then i'm changing and moving and all that that's so, living with it what, <laughs> that's living part of living with it part of living with it but we must be taking we must, we, we must actually take apply caution in trying mm. to live with it in that way yeah. if you must buy whatever series of clothes you wish to buy mm. I, i'm not talking about how terrible some of the mix look like now mm. because the way some of those uh, uh, face masks look, they are terrible. Mm. You know, you must take them home, wash them properly before you wear them. You are not expected to buy one now and fix immediately because of the other things that would have been, other contaminants that would have been on the face mask. Right. For social distancing, you cannot achieve social distancing in children, especially those children in crutches, mm. like uh, he rightly said. Mm. Crutches is a no no for me. You cannot open them now until well, sometimes in yeah, August. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. And August, to remember, is just okay. the best. All right, all right. Okay, doc, I'll come back to you now. He said crutches is a no, no no because they are kids. No. They can easily play, yes. bump on each other, you know, cry exactly. and, and all that. And also, you talked about churches. Also, though some states are beginning to reopen churches, I felt like scared that the number is still increasing. Can we live with this virus if the churches are really open? Mosque really open? Synagogue open? Churches institutions open? Take it up from there. Um, I'll just make a sentence on the crutch. Yeah. If the crutch are not reopened, parents cannot go to work. Mm. That's the truth of the matter. Tell me who looks after the children. And crutches have those they call aunties and uncles that look after them, more mm. of aunts. Mm. And they can manage them because they are still small. Too small. Mm. If parents can manage children at home, the crutches who are expert, uh, crutch, uh, leaders and owners and teachers who are experts can manage them better. But I wonder why you think that um, coronavirus cannot be lived with if churches are open, if mosques and your word synagogues mm -hmm. are open. What about our markets? What happens? Mm -hmm. And I know that many churches did not even lock down. We are after the big churches. We are not after the small churches in the corners and aspects of town. But 
much as that is condemnable, I think that in churches too, where you have orderliness, where you have people uh, assigned to different portfolios and different sections, mm. if it is a condition given to the churches, if you reopen, you must keep social distance. You must not have more than this number of persons in a service, as is being done now. It can be done. Many churches have auditoriums that are not even uh, filled up to a quarter. And so if they rearrange their chairs, keeping social distancing will be possible. The same thing is possible in the mosque and synagogues. Unless that is done, they will have not reopened anything. Churches too are big businesses, whether we like it or not. There are pastors, there are churches that have more than 200 pastors on the payroll. Some as many as 1,000. And what happens to them? There are people who, without going to church, believe that they are not even living, that they are merely existing. We are so religious a people that even when we are taking these medicine, medications, no matter how effective they are, unless we pray and have the man of God to pray for us, we don't feel well, even when the symptoms are not there. And sometimes when we are sick and the symptoms are all there, we claim that we are well, at, at least by faith. So I think the churches have cooperated enough. It is time to reopen right. the economy and the religious houses. All right, you I can hear the PD giving me a strong signal to call it a wrap right now on the show. Our time is up. Our time is up. I, I don't know if you just give us 30 seconds each, please, PD, to summarize yeah, um, what others do you have for Nigerians? One of the very the important thing I would yes. like, just like I've told my old set, my friends and mm. colleagues, mm. If you, I said one of the things to do now in this period is. Yeah. We must go back to our roots, whether we like it or not, to boost our immunity. Mm. We need to take some of those fruits, mm. some of those mixture, in form of herbal, or what you may call it. But mm. of course, it is very key to help protect the family and boost our immunity to prevent us and help us live with coronavirus. All right. So we should go back to our native and both things. Is that what you're talking about now? Bitter leaf, bitter cola, yes. guava, mango, <laughs> Cash, uh, Cashew, ginger. oranges, ginger. Yes, orange. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Uh, uh, Boris Robinson, 30 seconds, please. This time I absolutely agree with him. Yeah. Uh, there are families that have had the uh, coronavirus. Mm. I came up notable people to say, I go cured it. Mm. So I believe in it. Let us do that. Again, if we are reopening in phases, mm. let the school be the first to be reopened. Thank you, the thank you. Of our children. Thank you, thank you so, so much, gentlemen. That sort of Abu cured it. That is their own testimony. NCDC say we are still testing it. We don't know yet. Very but from what they said, go back to your local remedies ginger, fruits, vegetables, you know, those old food we used to eat. Very we should fall back to them to boost our immunity. And for what they all agree to also, we can't really live with this virus. Let's see what the government of the day will do about reopening the economy totally as we learn to live with this virus globally.